I recently mentioned on my blog that I was giving a talk about stock photography to a camera club in Winchester in Virginia and a number of you suggested that I should put together a video of the event in, when I thought about that and the difficulty sometimes of, of creating a video in a church environment um, I decided instead that I would put together this video which includes all the slides uh, that I used in the presentation together with the audio of the talk so basically I've overlaid the um, audio on top of the slides so that you can really focus on what the slide is saying without having the distraction uh, maybe of looking at my face during the presentation. So I, I hope this format works and I hope you learn something from the presentation as we go through the slides now. Thanks. So I, I'm going to talk about stock photography um, probably for about I don't know, 40 minutes or something like that. Um, and if at any time if I say something you don't understand or you disagree with then please stop me. I'd much rather sort of handle the question or the comment at the time that it comes up um, rather than you know trying to wait to the end and, and answering the questions then. So can everyone hear me okay? Yes, yep. could be louder. Okay. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> My first question is what is a stock photo? I'm so a stock photo in, in essence is a photograph that is, has already been taken and hopefully will meet the needs of a designer, either of these you know, posters or a magazine or a website, um, rather than commissioning a photographer. So that's basically what a stock photograph is. And these days they come from online and searchable <coughs> databases, that's how you get them. Uh, you can use them on the web, you can print them, you can put them in calendars, greeting cards, news outlets, advertising, products, magazines, basically <coughs> pretty much any image you see ev anywhere and, and increasingly videos as well have probably come from a stock photo somewhere. And this was just a cheesy example that Vince Vaughan <coughs> came up with to uh, sort of advertise a film he was in, but that's the sort of you know what people think of them relatively cheesy people sort of looking at a screen or shaking hands or something like that but stock photos are much wider than that they're not just people uh, this is one of mine I was just walking along a beach in Hawaii you know it's sort of hard life um, and I saw these surfboards and I thought that looks nice against the blue sky and that particular one has earned me $1,500 or something since I uploaded it. So that um, covered your airfare, huh? It covered the airfare, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, and it's used in places like this, a sort of, uh, I don't know what that says, swept by burn this or something and San Diego. So, it, you know, the fact it's used in a San Diego website, um, you know, they don't care where it was actually taken. They can't tell where it's taken, obviously. Uh, so it's, you know, that's the sort of way that people would um, use that particular image. And then I thought, well, why don't I sort of get into Photoshop and extract it from its background and put it in front of some big waves and here's some waves and, you know, that looks more like a difficult sort of surfing thing and here's it against white so that the designer can put it into their own images. and. I think altogether it's $3,140 for that one picture um, because I you know, did a bit of Photoshop magic and turned it into other things. And my bestseller actually is a cat. I have a question, mm -hmm. does multiple groups buy it so they don't care that it's done for San Diego and done for something else? Right? No, the, the vast majority of um, agencies are non-exclusive so mm -hmm. basically I'm putting the image there people can license it anyone can license it and in order to get exclusive use of an image you've really got to pay a lot of money mm -hmm. so most of the people who are going to these sorts of sites just want an image they want something to put there on <laughs> their website that you know dresses up the words mm -hmm. um, so they don't care okay. so it, the bestseller is, you know, this little picture of a cat. Um, there's an example of, of it being used, animals on the other side. And that particular one, I actually uploaded it in 2011, and it's, uh, it has earned $3,000 from 3,000 
download. So it's been sold 3,075 times, which sort of raises the question, is is a dollar all a photograph is worth these days? <laughs> you know, I, we, we think about our industry being devalued a little bit. Um, so a dollar for sale is, is what that particular uh, cat has, has earned me. And it's sort of, if you look back at, at the history of stock photography and often, you know, when you talk to professional photographers now, they say, you know, I used to get a lot of money from stock in the old days. And the reason was that it was a lot more difficult in the old days when film photography, we were talking, wherever Steve is, we were talking about film photography in the past and how difficult it was to make sure that you were actually going to get you know, a good image. You couldn't see until it came back from uh, the processing. And the stock agencies had to handle physical things. They had to handle the negative. They had to make prints from it. They had to you know, send them on a, a motorbike to the user. Um, magazines and newspapers made profits, which is probably not, not the case these days. And images were often licensed, coming back to that exclusive question, they were licensed for a specific use. So if you wanted it um, in a particular magazine, you paid basically depending on how many copies of that magazine were, um, were going to go out. So people would definitely, you know, were paid a lot more in those days. And here's a, an example of one of mine that uh, was sold on a, a more expensive website under one of these what's called rights managed licenses. So someone bought it for a magazine, a print, a million copies. It was going to be inside up to a quarter of a page. And they actually paid $375 for it. The agency kept 50% and, and I got 187 So it's a sort of funny industry in the sense that some people are willing to pay this much money. Other people um, are quite happy, well, naturally, quite happy paying a lot less than that. And, and the, the strange thing that I, I find about the industry is that this image is actually for sale on sites where it only costs ten dollars, but someone was happy paying three hundred and seventy-five. Now, do I care about that? <laughs> no, I don't. But it shows that <laughs> you know people don't search. I suppose you know you're in a big company, you have an account with this agency, you find the picture you want, you license it, or the company pays for it. So, so people don't search about, even though they could find the, you know, the same image for quite a lot less money. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, if you take a picture with children in it and they are on a public thoroughfare, is there any problem with that going public for identification if you get their face? Um, no. Well, I'll, I've actually got a slide on that coming up that okay. question about releases yeah. and whether you're allowed yeah, to take children. that sort of thing. Yeah, I'll, I will answer that uh, when we come to it. So, so, you know, as I was saying, the world has changed now. Right? First digitalization of the images, the internet's there. The competition, to some extent, are, are free downloads. A lot of people think that if they can find an image on the internet, that means that they can use it because well, it's there, that, you know, it's free, I can use it. So the competition, in effect, are people that don't pay anything. Um, there's a lot of high-quality images about now because people, you know, with digital cameras can take um, good photos. So if you search for cats, the word cats on Shutterstock, which is the, one of the biggest sites, there are one and a half <coughs> million images of cats. And so, you know, the chance of finding, uh, you know, selling a cat within all of that, uh, you know, that volume is not high. I think as well the industry is global. There are photographers in the Philippines, there are photographers in South America to whom a dollar is worth a lot more than people in the, you know, may think in the US. Um, and so they're quite happy to um, work and, and get less money. But the positive side of it is that there are now many, many more uses of images. There are websites everywhere, there are blogs, there are, you know, everything is online and everything wants a photo attached to it. People hate just putting text there. They want some photo to um, illustrate whatever they're writing about. So the, the cost, you know, in effect, the price of 
of what we're selling has gone down, but the volume of, of what we're selling has gone up at the same time. So, so I think that's what I'm trying to play, that um, balance between, yes, you don't get much for a particular image, but you maybe sell thousands of copies of it or hundreds of copies of it. Uh, they, they're actually not sold technically, they're licensed. Um, and so, as I said earlier, the agencies are non-exclusive, so I can put the same picture on multiple agencies. All that people are doing is taking a digital copy of it, so the same image you know, can sell as many times as, as people want to buy it. And they can continue to sell for years and years. So it's a, a bit like um, a pension or an annuity. You, you put the effort in now, you upload the images to a, um, an agency, and hopefully it continues to earn money uh, for years going on, on into the future. So I think this was, I think this is a horrible picture now, but I thought it was quite good when I took it in 2008. <laughs> but it still sells from time to time. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, sort of not that good. I'm sure I do better these days. Um, so images now sell under a license that's called royalty free, which must be one of the worst definitions that are names that anyone came up with because it sort of says well royalty free that must be you don't pay for it you know royalty is what you pay it's royalty free but anyway it's that's what the license is called and basically what it means is I can license it from an agency and I can then use it as many times as I want in as many places as I want um, and so it's used, you know, someone licenses it, they can use it this month on one of their websites, they can use it next month on another of their websites. So it basically meant you don't have to pay a royalty every time you use it. You license it, you know, once for life. Um, and so on this site called Shutterstock, um, many people have a, what's called a subscription plan <laughs> where they can download a certain number of images a day um, for... $199, I think 25 downloads a day for $199 a month is what the buyer would pay. What the photographer gets is somewhere between 25 cents and 38 cents every time they pick one of, of uh, my images. What did that say, <coughs> not for resale as part of the product? Well, the, this subscription plan um, restricts the user to simply using it on a website. When it's part of a product, which is actually this, they've got to pay quite a lot more. So, so if you're simply using it to illustrate an article on a, on a website, that's where the 38 cents come from. If they're using the image on a product, so like this is on a bag of cat food, they probably had to pay uh, $150 or something and I get between uh, 20 to 120, depending on uh, sort of how it's used. So, so I, you know, I've no control over, you know, when people buy it for a product versus buy it for a website. It's, you know, it's just random as far as I, I'm concerned. But the people definitely pay a lot more when it's going to go on a product like that. And they don't care about that. I mean, if they're putting that cat on Fancy Feast, and somebody else puts it in a porn movie, that doesn't bother them? No, well, I've not seen cat porn movies. <laughs> but you'll look more carefully next time. But yes, I, I, I don't, you know, I'm trying to think what a, a big make of pet food would be, but I doubt if a big, one of the biggest companies would use one of these sort of type of photos. This is, I think, a smaller company. Um, I think a big company would actually pay a photographer to do it so that they would have exclusive use of that particular image on, you know, on, on their products. If you're a smaller company and you're just trying to you know, sell a digestive health supplement, you're not going to want to afford the photographer. You're going to just use that image and you know, hopefully it gives the right message. Um, so as I said earlier, the pricing actually turns out to be pretty variable. My average might be a dollar, but sometimes I get $120, sometimes I get $200, sometimes I get four cents for, I don't know, some small usage somewhere. 
and, and it's, it's some people have a lot of problem with this. They think I'm not going to sell it on that site because I sold one for four cents, and I, you know, my photography is worth more than four cents. And I just think, you know, okay, someone had a particularly small need. They could have got one for free if they just stolen it, you know, off the internet. I got four cents. Well, that's better than nothing. <laughs> And it doesn't cost me anything. You know, once I put the image there, if it gets four cents, that's four cents more than it would have got if I hadn't put the image there, if you see what I mean. So getting into stock almost requires this. This isn't a value judgment that people are making of my photography. I, I shouldn't feel, because they only want to pay four cents, that that means my photography is rubbish. That's just what the market is on that particular size, on that particular agency. So you've got to get over that. This isn't a judgment on the quality of your you know, camera work or your photography. It's just you know, that's what the market happens to be on that particular site. So that I, I sort of categorize what you can sell as three things. There are people, pictures, there are things, and there are places. Um, I tend to focus on places and things, partly because I don't feel as comfortable taking pictures of people, and I'll come on to your question in a minute about the risks of, of model releases. You, if you want good quality people, you may have to pay models, so you've actually got a cost of um, you know, taking the pictures. So I tend to focus here. There's definitely a very big market for real people photos, not just models, but you know, people that look realistic. And if you're comfortable taking pictures of, you know, people and they look real, then, you know, that's a big market. But I tend to be over here in my sort of comfort zone. So this legal question that was sort of mentioned, um, in and this is a US view, the rules are slightly different in other countries, but in essence in the US you don't have a, a right to privacy when you're in a public place. And that applies for any sort of person, whether it's a child or an adult or an old adult. or it, You just don't have a right of, of privacy when you're in a public place. So if the photographer's in a public place and you're in a public place, then the photographer can you know, take your picture. Um, Animals have no right to privacy at all, wherever they are, so apart from maybe Lassie or something like that. But in essence, my cat didn't have any right to privacy. Um, it's sometimes a bit complicated with buildings. Um, some built modern buildings, the architect has copyrighted the design and uh, tried to protect the design. So sometimes it's a little bit uh, sort of more complicated with the building, but in essence, if you are in a public location, you can take a picture of any building that you see, and you can use it on your website, you can sell it as a fine art print, but it's this, and it's a legal word, publishing, that brings the potential issues. Publishing doesn't mean I put it on my website and someone can see it. It means making it available to a large group of individuals. So you, like you publish a newspaper, or you publish a magazine, um, or you publish a, you know, a, a website which is intended to be read by a lot of people. So your own portfolio, there's, as far as I know, no issues in you putting whatever picture you want of anyone or anything, but this publishing is where the issues come. And I the have a question about that. We have a, a site where we put the winners, mm -hmm. and it is for public consumption. How does that... Yeah. How does that, uh... well, that? Well, that would fall into the portfolio sort of category. So you're not, well, you are trying to let the general public see it, but you're not like pushing it out into the world for, and, and you know, your business is to make sure that people see it. I think it's a, a sort of a fine line, you know, as to, well, how many people have got to see it in order to meet the definition of publishing? And I, I must admit, I'm not sure. But certainly everything I read has said your own portfolio isn't publishing it. Even the stock agencies putting it on their website for people to look at isn't publishing it. Mm -hmm. It's the final user of it that's you know, putting it out into the world that is the publisher of, 
of that image. And, and there are two things that a publisher can do. They can use a photo for news-related stories, and that's called an editorial usage. Or they can use it to, in a commercial sense, to advocate a position, like a political party might you know, advocate a particular <coughs> position, or uh, advocate for a product. So commercial use of an image is when someone is trying to sell you a product or sell you a point of view. If you're simply using a picture to illustrate a story about something, that's called editorial use. And it's this commercial one where anybody that's recognized, even if it was in a public place, needs to agree that their image can be used. Um, so, and I've got an example coming up, but in essence, Anyone who um, is going to be used to illustrate a product has got to sign a legal release saying, I'm comfortable with my image being used to um, sort of illustrate products in general. Not that particular product, but you know, I'm happy with my image being used to illustrate products. Yeah. Who's but responsible yeah. for getting that? Is the photographer. You, you would yes. have to get that. Yes. So if you had a great picture and you were on a public area and you thought maybe this could be used to make a profit <coughs> by mm -hmm. business, you've got to go up to those people and say, would you sign this? Yes. Please sell one. Okay. Yes. And, and that's why I find people photography harder. Mm -hmm. I have done it. I, I was taking a picture of some uh, sort of, I suppose, young men jumping in the sea in, in Kauai. And I thought, well, that, you know, it was a lovely day and the sea was turquoise and all the rest of it. And I went up to them and said, I, you know, I'll send you these photos. Uh, would you sign this release for me when you get the photos? And one of them did. You know, he was happy with the copies of the photos and he sent me back the release. And so I, you know, was able to use um, that photo in a different way. I, you know, it can be used for anything, basically, um, like advertising a holiday in... Okay. Uh, Kauai, but I, it, it's hard to do because you know you're giving people a legal document, and I, so I, I generally tend to steer away from that. To be honest, the, the key here is recognizable. Right? Yeah, it is. Yes, it, it is. is. Um, and I, I've I've got an example of you know what's okay. recognizable and what isn't. So a release is basically this legal document. It's, okay. It is a formal legal document and they need to sign it and a witness needs to sign it you know um, I, and it gives the right to use their image um, in, in, in basically it gives them gives me the right to use their image however I want is what the model release basically says um, and property releases are the same it's the right to use a particular building yes so where would you find a witness to sign it? Um, well, in, in, in that, that case, person, the <laughs> well, the photographer signs it, the person signs it, and the witness is supposed to witness their signature, but, you know, most people would be comfortable with someone you know, else signing a, a it. Big, there's been a big to-do about this young lady who had the yes. photographer yep. take, and she, he was just going to give her the pictures, and she was to sign this. Yes. And People have been calling her all over the place from her image being used everywhere. It's you, it is, yes. I, but she, he didn't have a witness, and, and she said... Um, well, I, I, you know, I, when I read that, I thought the photographer probably didn't explain what she was signing. She felt like she did it, though. She, she didn't ask for anything, because she said, yeah. I signed it. Yes. You know, I'm responsible, so... But it was an interesting thing. But I know it was just her. He, they were the only two people there. He took oh, the right, pictures, right. and and she signed it. <laughs> I wonder if he added the witness later, <laughs> because certainly the forms I use have got a witness uh, line on them as well, yeah. which probably protects me more because it, sure you know, makes sure that uh, there was hopefully someone else there at the time. And in the case where I sent the photos to this guy in Kauai, he got someone. To, to witness his signature and he sent it back to me because if we didn't do it there on the beach, he did it when did he got home. Did you for an email address yes. and all that? Yeah, and scanned it back to me. So, he, I mean, he liked the pictures I'd taken, so he, you know, he thought that was a good, you know, good balance. Um, 
so this would be editorial usage. There are people here, I mean, okay, they've got their backs <laughs> to the camera, but that certainly the aeroplane is a very clear, um, you know, everyone can see it's Air France. And so I don't have an Air France property release, and I certainly don't have model releases from these people. But it can be used in a newspaper to talk about this particular airport, which is in St. Martin. Um, and so, you know, the, these people can't say, well, I don't want my picture, you know, included on that. They were there in a public place, and, you know, to some extent, that's a risk of being in a public place. This one is, um, you know, these two people are, are very recognizable, and I don't have model releases from those people. So that could be used in a travel article about Ocean City and the boardwalk. It could be used in an article about the issues of obesity, um, but it couldn't be used by a publisher promoting slimming products because that would imply that these two people were somehow agreeing with the product. You know, or, so it's, that's the difference between, that's editorial, this is commercial. So this needs a model release, this doesn't because they were in a public place. You know, you could say, should I have taken these people? I don't know. They just walk in here, that's Ocean City. Um, and but that I use this as an example of that difference between the two. And it wouldn't, as far as I know, have made any difference if these if they had a child with them. Mm -hmm. It would still have been the same sort of category of usage. But the important part of this is that the photographer doesn't know how it's going to be used. Right. It's the publisher that actually decides how it's used, whether it's used like this or used like this. And that's why the risk is essentially with the publisher, not with the photographer. Because mm -hmm. the photographer, you know, as long as you don't lie and say, you know, I had, well, I have releases, but, you know, as long as you don't lie, it's the publisher that is making this distinction and hence they bear the legal risk of, uh, of the use of that image. Can you put um, photos of the stock and say they cannot be used for promoting a product? Mm. A, a stock agency would, without model releases, and there are so many people in this, it's impossible to get model releases, mm -hmm. the agency would say, and I would submit it as editorial only, Okay. And so their website would say editorial only. Okay. You know, someone could ignore that and do what they want with it when they get the picture. But basically, I've said it's editorial because I don't have releases. Yeah. The agency has said it's editorial as well. So, so, so this might be a good place to ask the question. What the definition of recognizable? If you take these two people out, people look a lot like mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Kind of strip them out. Are those people in the background recognizable? I, it, that's a, a matter of opinion. Some agencies are very strict about it. And, and they're, they're strict in the sense that they're trying to protect themselves. They're, you know, erring on the side of caution that rather than, you know, reality. Um, because unless you have bought the full-size image and Luca did 100%, you can't see these people they you know they've got their back to you these are you know in shadow down here i mean you run into a little bit of issue with these sorts of things because these are products and so strictly speaking they need some sort of release so it's not just people it's in in a outdoor scene like this it's the people plus these businesses don't re can't be recognizable either and so it's very difficult to like remove all these um it's sort of possible in Photoshop, but very difficult to make a picture like that, right. uh, you know, completely well, I, clean. I, I've heard more about people where you yeah. got, I, like this gentleman standing on the left-hand side where it's a back shot. Mm -hmm. If it's the back of the person, yeah. it's probably for you. Yeah, I, and uh, my understanding of this, and I, you know, what did they always say, I'm no lawyer, um, is that it's not can the person recognize themselves, it's can a member of the general public recognize that, who that person is. So it's, you know, maybe that person said, oh, that was me, I remember, you know, I w that's my jacket. 
But it, that's not important. It's not whether they can recognize themselves, it's whether the general public can recognize. Um, well, how about their family? Well, the, I think this general public thing probably comes back to the publishing idea. Can a, a regular member of the general public identify that person and assign the viewer of the product to them? Because what everyone is trying to protect is to say, you know, I, this is a, about a slimming product, and is this man somehow validating or agreeing with the idea that this slimming product is good? That's, that's what this whole release thing is about. It's, are, are you assigning a view to them that they may not agree with or uh, and certainly haven't agreed that their view should be assigned to that, if that, if that makes sense? I have a question about that. If you took the signage on the building mm -hmm. and you did remove it, it would the name would be gone, but the, it's still a very recognizable it, it, Yes. That. Is um, that, how, how that it's not so much the place, it's the businesses. Um, so Ocean City is a place. It doesn't, you know, obviously I take lots of pictures of recognizable places. It's uh, products and businesses and people within that place that uh, haven't given their agreement to being used to advertise a product. That, so that's if you took the name off the building, mm -hmm. then it would be... Okay, it would. The fact it. that it's Ocean City w would be right. fine. Uh, and it's sort of, does that person that owns that sign agree with the product that's being, you know, advertised? Mm -hmm. That's that's essen essentially what they are um, controlling. I, there's actually a big market for editorial pictures. And as I, I was down in Winchester this afternoon taking pictures of different sorts of buildings because. When one of these companies is in the news, a newspaper wants a picture to illustrate the article. And so they could go to the company and say, have you a picture of your store? But they don't like to do that because that's sort of letting the company advertise themselves. So they want you know, a picture of a store. Um, and so wherever I go, I try and take you know, pictures. It's a bit boring. You could hardly say this is artistic. <laughs> <laughs> But I, you know, I take this sort of thing, and the same with this, because these are obviously very recognisable names. But if it's an article about credit cards, then people want a picture of credit cards to use against it. So editorial images might be boring, but you know, you can make money on them. This this was um, commercial use. Now, why was that commercial use? Well, first of all, this used to be my house, so I could give them property release for the for the house and I removed all of the identifying things on that truck uh, and I think that's what that next picture was so you know it had a name here and it had a name here and it had something written up here and a, probably a little badge there and so I removed all of that in in Photoshop so now I ended up with an image of you know drilling in a, a backyard it was for a geothermal system um, that sold very well because, uh, you know, when I, I think this was an example, East Coast Irrigation and Landscaping, and there's my picture, and that was my picture as well. What I think is a bit strange is if you read the words, it says, please feel free to browse through our portfolio of past products. <laughs> <laughs> and these people are in Florida, and my house was in Virginia. <laughs> um, so, you know, I take definitely take this sort of thing with a pinch of salt because all people are using, you know, I don't know, maybe that's their product, I don't know. But certainly these two are mine and definitely I didn't use this company. So, you know, whoever this company is, they are lying about the use of these products. Uh, model releases, yeah, definitely required. That's, you can see who the person is, this one, Oh, you could say I'm not absolutely recognizable, but it's sort of close enough. Um, these people know because they've got their backs to the, um, you know, backs to the camera. It's just a generic name here, White Water. It's not like a something. You know, I'm sure it's something many uh, companies use. And this was another group. I actually took this in Ohio Pile, which is in Pennsylvania. Um, but here's somebody in 
Yellowstone saying you can, <laughs> this was taken on their river or something like that. I, I must be becoming very cynical about the use of photographs <laughs> on, the, on the website. Um, and, and going back to that model release one, and a bit like the story you told of the... <laughs> you're reading the words now. Um, the story you told, I, this was me, but whoops. What they've actually written is, pictured Daryl self-proclaimed sex god. Now, I think that's... Um, that's a promotion, I think. Yeah, I think that's, But I, I don't think the licenses from the stock agencies allow them to do that. They are supposed to say, if, if you're implying that this is a real person, you're supposed to put, this is a, a model, this is a stock model or something. Not claim that, you know, I'm Daryl, you know, whatever he is. <laughs> so there's, that's why I keep away from people photos as well, because you've no idea how these images are going to be used. Absolutely no control. Sorry? It would have sold better if you'd had that porn cat. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so, well, I love working in computer programming. That was sort of close from my telecom background. Um, so how much can you earn from this? You know, I've gone through various sort of numbers. The, there was a survey in um, 2014 where a, how many, 600 stock contributors sort of said how much they earned. Um, the median, which is if you line them all up, which is the middle one, is $4,000, which basically means there are a lot of people doing this that don't earn very much, that are at the low end of the spectrum. The maximum that somebody claimed, whoops, was $400,000. That would be nice. Um, the average portfolio size, 3,400 images. What I've been doing, uh, and I took the view quite a long time ago that <coughs> if I was going to talk about stock photography and write a book about it, I shouldn't be mealy-mouthed about how much you earn. Because if people keep saying, oh, yeah, I can make a fortune on this, um, but never actually back it up with figures, then, you know, are they really being honest? So I've always published uh, my results. And this year, well, 2017, it was almost $35,000, $33,000, $34,000. So definitely pays for those flights that you mentioned. Um, but it's definitely leveling off. It's sort of becoming harder, I think, as, as an industry, as more people get into it. Um, so even though I've carried on at the same rate of, of work, the earnings are definitely you know, not going up at the same rate that I'm adding images. And this is a very complex slide, but each of these little lines is a different agency. Um, and I submit to, I think, 17 different agencies. Um, and the reason I do it is because of this, that each one, you know, these ones at the top might only be $20, $30 a month, $40 a month, but they all add up. As long as it's, you know, it, it's a reasonable amount of effort to get the images there, or not too much effort to get the images there, then adding these little ones at the top collectively makes sense. You know, there's some big ones here. This is Shutterstock. This is iStock, which is the next biggest this is now Adobe stock that people that make Photoshop and Lightroom have their own stock company. So the definitely, you know, over 50% comes from three agencies, but a reasonable amount of money comes from these smaller ones at the top. Steve, you indicated, I think, that you give the same images to multiple uh, agencies? Yes. Is that yeah. right? I, essentially, all of my images go to all of the agencies. Um, and whether they're going to try and sell them for $300 or $2 makes no difference to me. I simply, you know, submit them. Um, and it's nice to get the $200 ones, but it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> yep. How big is your stock portfolio? Ah, that might be the next slide. <laughs> uh, there. <laughs> so this little picture hiding in the background here is... Um, so basically I've got somewhere around 10,000 images now um, and this has been the rate of adding them. Shutterstock is in the middle, uh, Adobe stock is, is down here. So in 2011 I had I don't know, 
1,400 images. In 2018, I have 10,000 images. So I, every month, I probably add 100 images, 150 images, something like that. So it's a, it's a job. It's not a hobby. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a job. And it doesn't, it's not a full-time job. I don't you know, spend all my life doing this sort of thing. But equally, you can't go at it half-heartedly. Um, because you, you just, you'll do something and you say, well, I put these there, but nothing's selling. Well, you know, what, what am I doing? A lot of people are giving up that exclusivity because you, you're tying yourself to the success of that agency. And, and agencies, are, you know, go up and down. There, there was a company called Fortolia, which was going on a downward slope, and, and I stopped uploading to them for a time. And then Adobe bought them. And they've you know, gone up and up because Adobe have closely integrated it into Photoshop and Lightroom. And, and, it, and so you never know what's going to happen. So to my mind, being exclusive with someone is too much. You know, you're tying yourself to their skills and future. Yeah. I'm not down to chartography or graphography, but you said that you load all the images. Yes. Yeah. So why are they different? <laughs> Well, they're, they're different because Adobe stock, which is this bottom one, don't take editorial images. And so these other two do. Yeah. And then this Zuna one, which is a, a German company, pretty much takes everything I send them. Whereas Shutterstock doesn't always accept them. Maybe they think there's some technical problem. Maybe they you know, think I've sent too many of the same type. So it, each one has a different view of what they want to accept. Steve. Yeah. <clears throat> what kind of technical requirements do the sites impose? I mean, and for the images that you wish to upload, in terms of resolution, you know, image size, format. Generally, it's a minimum of four to six megapixels, um, which is not that you know, it's pretty small these yeah. days. Um, but very high technical standards, higher than you would, you know, you would normally um, expect to see. So if there's a dust spot, <laughs> you know, that's rejected. Well, that's if it's slightly out of focus or something, yeah. uh, but TIFF instead of JPEG, uh, or, or JPEGs, or JPEGs with the sRGB color space, okay. because that's what generally is used on the web but saved at a high quality level. So they're, you know, like three or four megabytes mm -hmm. each by the time you've saved them. Yep. So um, I, I have uh, downloaded your Kindle book. I'm, I'm enjoying it a great deal, finding it very useful. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say that. And the impression I've gotten so far from the book and from your presentation tonight is that what you're looking for is a technically excellent, <coughs> compositionally competent, Chameleon-like picture. <laughs> that last one is good, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, you, took, you took a picture. Boy, that's a great cat picture with a strange yeah. look on the cat's face. Yeah. And what, not so good. Your cat picture, which is finding wide usage, is a good, interesting kind of cat picture mm. with some expression, yes. but nothing uh, that would bar its use for something. I mean, is that yes. what you're looking for? I, yes. I, I, what I often say to people is that if you can't think of how someone is going to use that image, then there's no point in you know taking it. So so it might be you know it might be a pretty extreme use or in something that's not going to happen very often. But if you can think of a use and then use that thought to describe it, which I'm going to come on to, how do people find it? then you're on your way to you know, making an image that has a chance of selling. If it's something, and I th I'll come on to the cat's one, because I think I was extremely lucky with that cat. I, th I think it must have been seen and got picked up a number of times early in its life as a photo. And because it's been seen and licensed multiple times, it rises in, the, in their search order because they want to show their buyers, images that you know sell, uh, that have already sold as a measure of popularity. So because it sold, it sort of sold more. Um, if it had never got that 
you know, first success, it probably would have gone into the other one and a half million <laughs> sort of pictures of cats. So I, I think there's definitely luck is in there as well. Um, but, oh, there it is. And, and, and this is one of the reasons I have on multiple sites. On Shutterstock, it's been downloaded 2,600 times as it earned $2,800. On this Fortolia site, which is now Adobe Stock, it's been downloaded eight times and has earned $5, $5.84. So it's sort of, you know, down here, some of it's downloaded, it's earned $5. So on some sites, it's managed to get traction. On other sites, and it's exactly the same picture, it's gone nowhere. So it's, that's partly why I upload to lots of sites, because you never know whether it's going to get traction or not but there's an element of luck in there. It's, you know, it must have triggered someone's thought in the early days and you know, it got some, got some traction going. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier, there's little, uh, you know, people don't shop around. So this one has sold three times on this expensive site for a total of $288, three times on this cheap site for a total of $3. <laughs> But do those people search here? No, they don't. <laughs> or as, at least as far as I know, they don't. You know, occasionally I'm sure someone does. You, but you don't make this presentation to them. No, <laughs> no. I have a question about using old pictures because mm -hmm. I have got some old pictures. They're family pictures, yeah. but they're terrific. And Bob has actually taken pictures of the pictures with bright lights because he does that to mm -hmm. share. Yeah. Can something like that be used? Well, it Let's depends say if the person is deceased and it depends who whose picture it is because like you my mother. No, but who took it? Okay. Because the photographer has the copyright, okay. and if you take a copy of it, the copyright hasn't moved from the photographer. So when you upload it, you've got to state. I am the copyright owner of this image. Okay. So now, if that person is deceased, yes, <laughs> that took the picture. Yes, it. I suppose legally, it depends if they pass their assets on to you in some way, okay. in some you know legally way. Well, no, well, you uh, <laughs> the heir. <hair. laughs> but uh, you know, also if if the person's deceased, they're not going to say you know come after you for using their pictures. Right. I just didn't know what the legality yeah. and it's, it's but the copyright should pictures, be yours. Old pictures yeah. are 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 used and they are terrific. Yes, I, yeah. I think the pictures before and I think it's 1923 is currently the date. Pictures before 1923 have no copyright left because copyright disappears okay. after a length of time. Right. So any picture, including like a, a scan from an old book from the 1880s, is completely public domain. Okay. And so you can like scan an old line drawing from a, a book published in you know, the 1900s and use that because there is no one owns the copyright on those sorts of things. So if your pictures are like, your family in the late 1800s, okay. then absolutely you can use them because any copyright that ever existed has gone away. Let me let me just say, all the questions are great, uh, but we've got about 10 more minutes. Oh. And uh, so I'm sure everyone wants to get right. the program. Okay, sorry, but okay. the questions were good though. Oh yeah, very good. Um, so those are my what, popular images. and. They generally tend to be bright and contrasty because the buyer is going to see them at this size first, and so they need to understand what it is and see whether it's you know going to meet their need. So you know that changes depending on how things are selling, but essentially that's what they, it looks like. Uh, that's my house. That sort of that earns quite a lot of money. It's my old house actually, and not sure whether the current buyer. Has ever seen it in you somewhere? <laughs> never mind. Um, and the reason it sells is that this is the popular ones on Adobe Stock, and it's there and it's here, and so it's right at the top of the search, so that when people search, that's what they see. Uh, I'm sure the buyer will hate this one if every season. <laughs> but you know, the house wasn't foreclosed, of course. Um, 
there's some good little uh, applications that show you how much individual images sell. So I, you know, I track uh, which of my most popular ones is one of a bag of ice that sold eighteen hundred dollars. Um, there are alternatives to stock agencies. You can try and self-host your images, and I've I've done that. It's not it's very hard. It's not very successful at all. There are print-on-demand sites, and those are sort of interesting. That's where people buy a print, and the, the company prints it and mats it and sends it to them and pays you for the uh, right to use the image. So this self-hosting one, a uh, very quick mention of it. It doesn't cost much to do. It's a fair amount of money to do, but you never get any traction. So this was my website, still is. Looks quite nice. You know, you can buy a small one at 99 cents, and but I maybe sell one every two months or something like that. So it's it's a vanity project rather than a you know anything that's worthwhile. Um, so what's involved? Think of interesting subjects. You've got to process them to be bright and contrasty. You've got to remove logos and distant people sometimes to if they are sort of recognisable. Then you've got to describe them and caption them, and I'll just come on to that in a minute. Then you save them as these JPEGs and upload to the uh, various sites. So that I normally put between 30 and 40 keywords, and then a description down here. So the keywords are what I think someone would be searching for when they want an image like that. And that's, this is the other place that people sort of give up. They like taking photographs, they like processing them, but they hate keywording and describing them. And a photograph without good keywords and description will never be found. You might never have you know, put it up there, it's sort of lost lost forever. So unless you're willing to sort of put the effort into properly describing something, then it's not worthwhile. So what can you take? Well, travel shots, uh, Washington DC, um, artistic ones down from New River Gorge Bridge, uh, Morgantown, $170 from 96 downloads of Morgantown. Um, Keep them bright and contrasty, as I, you know, I've mentioned already. When you've got a good subject, take multiple shots because you never know which one uh, is, you know, people are going to like or um, get hold of. Subjects can be anywhere. Oh, I could have used this one here, couldn't I? Instead of uh, <laughs> so that could have been an example. Um, this one earned, you know, it's a picture of a bulb <laughs> taken from the top, $790. And I saw it on a Deloitte website. I was looking to think, how do people use that? And there it is. It's sort of on the top of their website to do with data processing. So I don't know what's it got to do with that. But basically, that's uh, an example of where it's used. Um, you know, simple things like that. Cleaning your glasses. Um, that was the bag of ice. That was whoops, to illustrate gluten-free bread. <laughs> um, this little lamb, you can manipulate pictures. So that was the original lamb. This was a background with a funny little lamb sitting down and combine the two and you've got more attractive um, image. So I, you know, I always look at not what is the picture that I've got, but could I combine it with something to make it more interesting. And I, that, that was one I thought, well that just bit of grass but I could replace the back with a blue sky and I could put a bit of sun there and make it then I could put my land there <laughs> um, so you know people don't care whether it's you know a real picture it's it's what it can be used for that's um, really important uh, and you can do <laughs> clever manipulation like get in a swimming pool and hold a sign up um, I try to anticipate trends, what's going to be in the news. And so I was one of the early people that took pictures of Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin's in the news all the time. And some Chinese companies made pretend Bitcoins because Bitcoins are a virtual currency, they're not real. Uh, but some Chinese company made pretend ones, which I then bought from eBay. 
And so I've earned something like $1,700 from these pictures of, of pretend Bitcoins. And, and I see my pictures in various articles because, you know, there's lots of articles about Bitcoin. I've also took some pictures of, I found some very, an old bottle of OxyContin that the dentist probably gave me 15 years ago. And that's uh, unfortunately earned $3,600 because of all of the articles about opi opioid um, abuse. And so I've you know, got a range of those. Um, I've moved into stock video, um, partly because it's harder to do and so there's less competition. They sell for more money. Whoops, 50 to $100, come on back. Um, and with 4K cameras in particular, many you know, cameras can do 4K video, there's very little um, media up there at the 4K level. And, and broadcasters like 4K video, not because they broadcast it, but they can crop into it. Um, and use a part of it at a high definition level. And so I basically, I'm, when I can get round to it, take 4K videos of various things. So should you do stock photography? Well, the obvious answer is, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it's not for everyone. It's a lot of work. It's sort of, you've got to think of it as a, as a job, not as sort of a hobby that's gonna bring in a little bit of money. If you think of it as a job and you're going to put the effort in, then it can be rewarding, I think is probably the answer. It's sometimes, yeah, I don't bother now about rejections, but if you do a good picture and it gets rejected by an agency, you think, oh, why, that was, you know, was so good, it took me so long to do that. <laughs> but it's a steady stream of income. You can, the IRS aren't here, are they? No, you can set vacations and equipment against tax. So when I go to Hawaii, I can set the cost of the airfare and because I run it as a business and so it's a business expense. Um, you can find fame and fortune. Chocolate eaters more likely to be depressed. Um, again, <laughs> this model never complains. Um, and there's a shameless plug for my book. <laughs> <laughs> so I've finished in 10 minutes. You have indeed. <laughs> okay. So that was... Let's uh, hear it. <laughs>